Hello and welcome to online learning. I hope you are doing well. So this is Math 414, Stochastic Processes. I think most of you know me by now. So I will be uh, uploading uh, regularly videos on my YouTube channel. And you can uh, ask your questions either in the comments below the video or uh, if you want the private communication, you can send me an email and I will answer your questions. And I, I even I can make uh, a video to answer your questions. Okay, so <clears throat> um, there will be five chapters. Uh, chapter zero actually uh, is not really part of your program, but it's very, very useful. It, it is an introduction to stochastic or Monte Carlo simulations using, using Python. It's very um, useful, especially uh, for those of you who are studying actuarial science. And even for pure mathematicians, it's very good because uh, even pure mathematicians should know something about programming and Monte Carlo simulations. Okay, and we shall use this later in later chapters. Okay. Uh, then we will study finite Markov chains, chapter one, uh, which is a lengthy chapter. Actually, there are so many details. So we'll uh, now actually in chapter zero we will only sc scratch the surface of stochastic simulations and Python. So not we are not going to to go very deeply into these things. Uh, so in chapter one we'll study finite Markov chains. Uh, chapter two countable Markov chains. Chapter three Poisson processes. And we'll end with a small introduction to Brownian motion. Okay. Uh, the course is not so difficult, but as usual, uh, you should study regularly and don't let things accumulate before the exam. Okay. Now, uh, there are so many great uh, Python courses online. Uh, one reference is a PDF file, actually. It's called the SciPy Lecture, scipy.org. You can Google it. Uh, it's a 30, uh, 300 page, page uh, file. Uh, it's, it's very well written, actually. So I use this as a reference. Uh, now, on YouTube, you have also several good uh, courses on Python. I mentioned, if you know nothing in programming, I suggest that you watch uh, Mosh Hamedani YouTube channel. Uh, he has, for example, a six hours uh, course on Python. It's a little bit lengthy, but if you study every day 20 minutes, you will finish it in two three, or three weeks. So he explains very well the basics if you uh, are a novice in programming. Uh, so it's a good place to start. Now, if you want to dig deeper, uh, we have the freecodecamp.org channel on YouTube, and we have Corey Schaeffer also. <clears throat> but they, they have more advanced uh, uh, things in Python. Okay, so these are free resources. Now, there are also um, uh, not free resources. For example, you have, we have Coursera. Of course, on Coursera, you can take a course uh, for free, but you will not get a certificate unless you pay. Uh, the, uh, you, usually, they used to pay by course. It, it's got, it costed around 40, uh, $49 or $79. Now, I think it's monthly now. Uh, but it's a good thing if you want to uh, get a certificate, uh, it's good for your resume if you get a, a certificate that you finished a programming course or something. So, and the advantage, the other advantage is that it's more organized than on YouTube. So you, you, you have homeworks, assignments and exams and you get graded. So uh, it's, it's a good uh, thing to invest in. So there are also, of course, there are many programming uh, 
in Python courses. Um, and but, but let me tell you that if you really want to learn a programming language, you have to do projects. You cannot learn just by sitting and listening. You have to get your hands dirty. And on Coursera, they, on Coursera, they organize you this course. It's organized. So as I said, you do homeworks and, and so on. Um, there's also edX, like Coursera, same thing. Uh, you have also Stanford Online, where you can also, so on Coursera, edX, and Stanford Online, we have also Udacity, if you like, uh, where you can do projects. And, uh, okay, so it's a good thing to invest in, in, in Python. In, okay, I don't have the time to teach you Python. And actually, I'm not a specialist in Python, but I use it uh to illustrate the concepts of this course okay <clears throat> now uh you can install python and so as you know there are many text editors for python uh so we will be using jupyter notebook which is uh very intuitive and pedagogical so but if you install python with anaconda or win python uh, Jupyter Notebook will come, will, will be installed automatically. Now, I don't know why sometimes Anaconda have problem, has problems under Windows, but WinPython, if you are on Windows, it works very well. Okay, so I will uh, give you time to install this and maybe start taking a course. Uh, we'll not start uh, this week uh, with Python. Uh, now I would like to uh, introduce a little bit the course and what we are going to do, what uh, we'll be talking about. So the main, so our subject is stochastic processes. What is a stochastic process? A stochastic process is a collection of random variables. So of course I, I hope you are familiar with the concept of a random variable, variable aleatoire, if you are French. Um, a stochastic process is therefore a family uh, of indexed random variables. Usually, the index t represent, represents time. Okay, so uh, a stochastic so in stochastic process we study the evolution of random quantities. Okay, now there are so yeah so usually t is so capital T is the index set is a subset of uh, uh, R. But we may also have sometimes a subset of Rn or something else. But usually, we, in this course, we shall deal with two main cases. Uh, the case where t, the index t, is n, the set of non-negative integers or nat natural integers. So in this case, we have a sequence. In this case, a, uh, a stochastic process, just a sequence of random variables, but not uh, necessarily independent. This is an important point. The other case is when t equals zero infinity, and so we say we have so we say that the process continues time. Okay, now we have four things actually. We have discrete time and continuous time, and the random variables actually uh, can be continuous or discrete. Okay, or both, uh, or a mixture of them. I think not both, a mixture of them. Okay, so what does a stochastic, so an example of a stochastic process, for example, could be the, the price of a stock varying in time, or uh, interest rates, or the number of customers arriving at the post office. Okay, all these are, uh, so stochastic processes are models of such situations. Okay. Uh, so as I said, the random variables in the process, so each xt could be itself discrete or continuous. Now, if every xt is discrete and the time is discrete, we have a discrete time, discrete state process. Okay, and this will be the case of chapter one of Markov chains. <clears throat> okay, um, now as I said, the simplest we already encountered an, an example of a stochastic process when you considered an IID uh, sequence of. Uh, random variables. IID stands for independent and identically distributed. 
But this is very restrictive, actually, because in real life, the assumption of independence is not uh, satisfied. Okay? For example, if you are studying the price of a stock, there's no reason why the price uh, of the stock this day is independent of the, pre of the price the previous day. Okay? So in many interesting situations, we don't have independence. Okay? And then the study of stochastic process becomes more interesting. <clears throat> now, there are many problems in the, that we study in the theory of stochastic processes. Let me mention just three of them. So, if you want to compute probabilities, we need to specify the distribution of the process of the stochastic. What do I mean by distribution? Uh, if I have a discrete time, for example, uh, suppose that I have a sequence of uh, random variables, so the time is discrete and the variables are discrete. So, we would, if you want to compute probabilities, we need to have a way to compute the probability of this event, okay, x0 equal a, uh, given, x1 given, xn given, okay? Note that this is analog if we have just one variable, uh, we talk about the PMF of the variable, or probability mass function. Okay, uh, but here we have uh, a sequence of variables. So this is just an analog. And it's very important because it's not enough to say that something is random. If we really want to compute probabilities, we need to, to say which kind of random it is. Is it discrete? It's, is it continuous? Is it Bernoulli, geometric, normal? exponential, there are so many kind of random values. If we want to compute the probability, we have to specify the density of the random variable. And in this case, we, we, we need to specify the, the, what we call the, <coughs> uh, the distribution of the process. Okay? Another example, if you have, if you have a, suppose that we have a continuous time, continuous state, so uh, xt, for example, like this case of the Brownian motion, we need to specify these probabilities, okay? And this is exactly the analog of the distribution of a continuous random variable, okay? So in order to compute probabilities, if you have a continuous random variable, we have to specify what we call the PDF, the probability density function, okay? So I hope you are familiar with this from a first course in probability. Now, the analog here, we will be looking at such things. Okay, we, 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 should, we should be able to specify how to compute these things. Okay, so this is one thing that we shall deal with. But there's also another problem, uh, the, the problem of asymptotic behavior of the process. For example, suppose that I have a sequence, uh, a discrete time process. We'd like to know how what happens as n tends to infinity. How does the process behave? Okay, so this is the problem of asymptotic behavior. Now there is also the difficult problem of existence of a process. Uh, in pure mathematics, we well between brackets. Uh, 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 it's not clear why a certain process with certain properties exists. We have to construct it. And the construction may be difficult. Okay? Now, we will not be really concerned with this issue, except actually in Chapter 1, where it's just a consequence of our uh, development of our theory. So, it will be just an easy consequence of our theory. Okay? But uh, usually... Uh, we will accept the existence of a process like a Poisson process or a Brownian motion. Okay, that but but because the construction can be difficult. Okay, and since most of you are actually students, you don't need to. It's not very useful for you to dig into the constructions of processes. Okay, so this ends the small introduction to the course, and. Uh, in the next video, we shall uh, start ch with chapter zero. Okay, so if you have any question, please send me an email or 
leave it in the comments and I will answer you as soon as possible. Okay, thank you for your attention and see you in the next video.